This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue laying the foundation with Book 1. In Chapter 6, this is Section 24. Truth has no exceptions. What is true for you is true for me and is true for all, if it be the truth. Divine principle has no exceptions. There is no misperception that forgiveness cannot heal. God has no favorites, and since there is no order of difficulty in miracles, one seeming situation is as forgivable as the next. Yet by forgivable I mean that no illusion can stand in the light of divine principle. Upsets give way to joy in awareness as attack thoughts are released. Joy is natural to the spirit. The important point to see is that the world is distorted perception, a darkened lens. The ego distortion seemed to split the world in two and perceive subjects, objects, victims and victimizers, saints and sinners. Yet the split was in the mind and not the world. The correction is in the mind, not in the world. A change in perception is literally to look on the world anew with the spirit and see a forgiven world. Once the error is healed or seen as unreal, gone are the effects as well that the error seemed to produce. The body in the ego's perception can seem to be born to live, to grow sick and old, to be either victim or victimizer, and to die. Yet the spirit is eternal and therefore incapable of any of these illusions. Am I spirit or body is the distinction or decision that is key. For one is real and the other but a dream. Forgiveness sees illusions as illusions and dreams as dreams and thus sees the past as past. Such is true empowerment for to be aligned with a higher power is to truly be invulnerable. To find Seek no further. Be willing to discover that you are a seeker no longer, but one who is. Just what would change in experience, besides everything, if the real you experienced true identity and flowed from knowing union with God, instead of clinging to doubt and walking on fearful eggshells seeking it. You know the answer. You are the answer. It would mean having no excuses for holding on to the belief in victimhood. It would be an end to the cry But what about me? It would mean being free to love without limits. It would mean not coddling anyone who appears to be settling for less by saying, Yeah, I know what you mean. It would mean choosing prayer, meditation, etc. each morning instead of jumping onto the train of ego meanderings and busy nothings. 
It would mean the responsibility for the atonement, for complete inner peace, has been accepted. It would mean seeing the nothingness of the belief in the crowd of mass sleepiness and basking in the light of heaven within. It would mean eye contact from the window of the soul with the grocery clerk and the person on the street and everyone that comes to mind. Real, deep, contact from within the core of beingness. It would mean falling deeply without resistance. It would mean a depth of peace that is all so all-encompassing that for an instant the world disappears and the experience of true vision dawns. It would mean dancing in indescribable joy and experiencing awe about the power and glory and everlasting love of God. It would mean living in a universe that makes no mistakes, thus having not one thing to judge.